He brings him to disciples, and he says, you know what, your disciples couldn't cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And I think Jesus' response is twofold here. He says, faithless and perverse generation. One, because you've got people that are, that are in this state. I mean, it's a perverted generation when you've got people just... Um, you know, I don't, I don't believe personally that just it's just completely random who gets possessed with devils. I think people have, have more of a tendency to allow devils in than others. I don't think it's just completely 100% random. You'll notice, again, the, the people who, who end up becoming possessed with devils are going to have problems with drinking and drugs and into witchcraft and sorcery and all kinds of other things. They're going to open up that door to allow these, these devils to come in. So when he says, oh, faithless and perverse generation, yeah, because you're opening up the doors for these things to even happen. But also, when we see you know, faithless, the reason why, you know, the disciples asked him in just a few verses why they couldn't cast him out because he's, you know, this guy's possessed with devils and the disciples couldn't do anything about it after Jesus already gave them power over devils to go and cast them out, right? And it says here in verse 18, Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. So Jesus is able to cast this devil out. Obviously, Jesus has power over, over everything and over all the devils and everything. But the disciples asked him in verse 19, then came the disciples to Jesus' part and said, why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. So whatever was happening in this situation, obviously this was a pretty um, violent type of a devil that was inside of this kid, this child. He's, I mean, he's throwing him in the fire, into the water. And I, I would guess, I would venture to say that the disciples were probably a little fearful of this devil and maybe because of the power it had or possessed over this person that they started to become fear, you know, unbelieving, because Jesus said it was because of their unbelief, that they were even would have the power over this devil because it was, it was so powerful that they seemed to have a problem with that. But Jesus makes this great statement in telling them about the, the un, you know, well, it's because of your unbelief. He says, I tell you unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, this is just, just a really small, small seed. You just, have, you just have this much faith. You shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. What a great promise from Jesus saying, you know, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much faith, but you have to have faith, but it doesn't really take that much. And faith is you're honestly believing. You're not, you're not doubting. You're not wavering. I mean, you, you believe it, right? Like this is going to happen. You have that faith and you're relying on Christ, on the power of God, on the power of Christ. Completely rely on him. He says, you can make this mountain move. Now, we don't want to go to a, a verse like this and be like, all right, I'm going to test this and see if I can move this mountain from here to here. Right? And, and, and treat this like it's a Jedi power of the force that you can wield and I'm going to move a mountain over here and over here. You're completely missing the point. Completely missing the point. The whole, there's no purpose to remove a mountain from one place to another. There's no reason why God would even want for that to happen. But the, the whole purpose, the illustration he's giving, it's the reason why he's telling him this, is because moving a mountain is a completely impossible task. Right. Completely impossible. I mean, it, there, there is no way that anyone even think like, oh yeah, I think I want to move that mountain over there. I want to take Stone Mountain. I don't like where Stone Mountain is right now. I think we should just pick it up and let's just move it up a little bit further north or move it a little bit further south and just kind of get it out of the way. It's really causing a problem in that area. It's a nice area. You want to build that up some more. We got this big mountain in the way. You, you, can't, you, you can't do that. It's too monumental of a task to move a mountain. But the whole point is Jesus is saying nothing is impossible with your faith in God. That's, that's the whole purpose of it is to tell you 
You know, when you have faith, nothing's impossible. Oh, you're facing this big spiritual battle and this big spiritual problem, and there's this devil that, that is just seems really powerful, and, that, and who are you? You're just some person. Well, if you have the, just a little bit of faith in Christ, that just a faith is a grain of mustard seed, nothing's impossible for you. Nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is impossible, you know, under, you know, with the power of God. That's what he's saying. Even, even just being able to remove a mountain, he's saying that, that's nothing. Because God can do anything. We look at something like that and go, that, there's no way. You just throw up your hand and give up. And, and Jesus is saying, no, just, just have the faith. And, and, you could, and God will make the impossible possible. 